Welcome to the Cardboard Cave Podcast. The number one show in Puerto Rico about trading card games. Thanks for Alter Sleeves for sponsoring our show. Use our affiliate link or code Cardboard Cave for 5% off your order and spice up your commander. Don't forget to follow us on our social media or listen to us in all major audio platforms. Thanks for being part of our community and please like, share, and comment below. Plus enjoy the live show. So. Yeah, JP. Uh, pre release was really interesting for the fact that it was just with play boosters instead of normal draft boosters. Just play boosters no longer, uh, draft boosters no longer exist. And set boosters and draft boosters got combined into play boosters. I thought it was going to affect the gameplay. Oh, well, it did affect the gameplay, but uh, I'll get to that. I thought it would affect more, mostly because set boosters. Had, uh, had you had uh, a higher uh, probability chance of opening multiple uh, rares, and play boosters still have that uh, that uh, possibility, but I feel like it was a lot more balanced than I thought it would be, especially for gameplay and drafting and, and just the pre release itself. Uh, how, what, how how much did it cost? That's interesting. So, yeah. so I, I paid twenty dollars for the tournament. I'm not sure if like it was a special. Deal, yeah. or like because there was 36 players that uh, they had a, like a deal for that but yeah it was 20 dollars only which really surprised me especially because you got a like you get an assured promo card mm -hmm. and then inside the promo pack you get an assured mythic which is either the tomic the melek or voja yeah, and those uh, those three cards are not uh, not illegal to play in the pre-release, but everything else was is fine. Uh, I found it really interesting. Honestly, uh, the price of each individual booster should be around three dollars seventy-five. So it's three dollars seventy-five for six packs. That's up in, I think, $20, so that's under the MSRP, I guess. Uh, so I think it was a great deal. Did the list cards affect the decks, like having that inclusion? Because, you know, the list could have like very unbalanced stuff. Because I'm, what, I'm, what I'm guessing happened here, that's me speculating with Wizards, is that they included the play boosters, but they, they didn't really take into account the drafting experience or the sealed experience which is the one that you had um did the list uh make make gameplay a little unstable a little chaotic i got a mist veil planes out of it okay. and that's the only list card i got so i didn't even play that card uh, i know someone who got a blue black card and they were running like a soul tie deck you yeah. know blue black green and they managed to stick it in but it never became like extremely relevant. Gotcha. Uh, I'm sure if someone opens like the top end of the list cards, it will be relevant. But because play boosters have such a high probability of getting multiple rares, uh, the games felt higher powered, but also very balanced because you could really, everyone had like a very certain way of managing their mechanics. And you could open like you only uh, like not be benefited from that if you opened like badly in terms of color uh, like color coordination. So uh, I'll take my experience for example. I o I opened a good amount of uh, black, a good amount of green, a good amount of blue, and the most I opened is red. But my white was lacking. Then I, my 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 first few rares were white. I got no more lies, which were uncommon for the, the mana counter spell. I got two of them in the pre-release, and I got a Delne. 
So I was like, okay, I guess I have to play white since Dalmay is just so strong and No More Lies is so strong. And I'm obviously going to be playing uh, red because it's the most colors you want. But you, you usually, in pre-release or in drafting, uh, you're trying to look for consistency and power at the same time. Like a balance between the two, because if you have power but no consistency, you're just going to be a glass cannon. So I had enough consistency with my colors okay. uh, that I could run three colors, which by the way, the Murders of uh, Marco, Mal, uh, Markov Matt, Karlov, it's actually Karlov, uh, Murders at Karlov Manor, god damn that's a mouthful, yeah. is they kind of motivate you, like they kind of guide you to doing three color drafts and three color uh, Okay. So. I felt like I was aiming towards three colors and naturally ended up there and uh, it was all very balanced. Um, it's interesting because I uh, I checked Gavin Verhees talking about uh, about the drafting experience in, in on Twitter. He asked everyone in the community what they thought and it, and it seemed a little mixed. Some people were enjoying the, like you said, the higher power gameplay that it had with the boosters. Some other people were criticizing, obviously, the, the price increase. I mean, you didn't have it, but maybe in the future it will be something that's going to happen. Um, the uptick in price was a problem, and there is there's a chaotic nature to it with the list, because the list is not fine-tuned for skilled gameplay. Um, it could happen that someone might pull something that's kind of broken from the list, but they didn't take that into account. Um, and it could just overwhelmingly, like, if you know how to build around that broken card that you might get from the list, you might actually win the whole the whole tournament. But uh, what we're saying is that perhaps the drafting experience is going to be infinitely better now because it's almost like chaos draft to a certain point. Yeah, and, and those, like, those play boosters felt a lot better to crack open. I really did like them a lot. Uh, and in terms of opening the list cards and having those things be, uh, like, uh, overpowered. I had like my first match. I lost. Uh, I won three matches, like three rounds, and lost my first one. So I went one and three. Okay. Like three and one, I guess. Uh, three wins, one loss. That first round, the guy had. Uh, he showed me his pool after I lost, and the guy had like four mythics in, oh, wow. in the in, in the. In the pre-release pack, yeah, and all like two of his cards were not white or green. Everything else was white and green. So he had a, an amazing. He, I mean, he, he went undefeated because he lost a round with me because he uh, he went two and one with me. Mm -hmm. He got second place even though he was undefeated. Yeah, because the other player was four and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With everything. Okay, but like. Uh, I think we probably lost JP a little bit. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If we see that his screen leaves, that means that. Yeah, I think it might have been his internet. So uh, we live in Puerto Rico, folks. Um, yeah. Puerto Rico always has problems, especially the instability of the internet and the electricity because of, you know, infrastructure. So there might be a chance that JP left. But. I think uh, it was very succinct, and I feel like he explained thoroughly what it was like to kind of draft. Murders at Marlov Manor. Haha, <laughs> I'm such a rebel. It's supposed to be Karlov, but no one says Karlov because everyone messes it up. Even me, I mess it up all the time. Um, so, oh, he's yeah. back, he's back. Oh, he's, he's back. back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yep. no light, like, the, the light flickered. Uh, it's, it's like heavy rain over here. Yeah, it's Puerto Rico. It's Puerto Rico. <laughs> It's Puerto Rico. Uh, yeah, so so final thoughts on, on like the experience overall. I really liked it. Uh, uh, in terms of my personal experience, I'm re uh, I'm really surprised at the comeback I could do. I I like I felt like the only reason I had I beat him like beat the first person in one game was because he had he got mana screwed. The next two games were overwhelmingly on his, uh, on his advantage, and I could do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So going to my second round, 
I was uh, hesitant to feel good about it, like put good about my deck. But then I won, and then the third round, I won, and then the fourth round, I won in a sweep. It was a two-all sweep. Yeah. Uh, and again, the only reason I got I top top eight because I did top eight uh, was because the guy who I lost to went undefeated. Okay, okay. He kept pulling me upwards. Uh, if he would have lost, I would have gotten like number nine. Yeah. Just, yeah. just barely mm -hmm. out of the top ten. Yeah, that, those those uh, points matter. Which, which yeah. also, uh, I, I did show in, in our personal chat uh, the amount of rares I got. I'm pretty sure I haven't organized it. Uh, they should be in this bag. Like, uh, I think the show yeah. the viewers. Trash can. Uh, of course, I got these escape tunnels, but yep. uh, that's not the point. Uh, here we go. Like, I got. I'm not sure if it will focus. This Dalne, Intrude the Mine, Pride of the Whole Played, Malik Reforge, Sir Researcher. These are four mythics. Mm -hmm. Thundering Falls, Hedge Maze, uh, Promo Pack. With the Sir Ginger promo pack, a Tulsimir, a Leyline, the Mizet, uh, this is not from that. Uh, Kellen, Ill Timed Explosion, two Kyloxes, uh, both of them foil, yeah. uh, Archduke's Charm, Case of the Crimson Pulse, Cranko, Connecting the Dots, Pyrotechnic Performer, which was the MVP of my deck. This mm -hmm. thing is so stupid, it just flips and deals, it just burns. Uh, I had like four threes, and they started flipping and just, just burning them for four and hitting them for four. Uh, a promo pack veto. Uh, this is an uncommon, uh, common, but this is like the, the, the doggy. I want yeah. it. It's foils. I already put another foil one. I got two foil ones. Uh, the forensic gadgeteer. A trouble in pairs, borderless, because the normal one is is from the it's from the promo pack. Uh, the normal one is from the banner deck. And a foil assemble the players, case of the Armenian Feast, and this is a foil Nova's Inspector uh, Assassin's Trophy, and that's it, yeah. So I got a lot of, like, a yeah, lot that's of, a lot of value. That's a lot of value. Of course, I got a, an extreme, like, I, I got lucky for like top eight, just barely, mm -hmm. and uh, the top eight prizes were really good. Yeah, but not every every LGS will be the same in terms of prize support. So some people might get lucky, some people might not. It all depends. Okay.